And I want to welcome John Hewlett to the podium if this was live, but um, as our speaker. John, I know you have a lot of great information to share with us about uh, enterprise risk analysis as an overview, so I will let you just um, take over. Thank you. Well, okay, Jeff. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share a few ideas from our newest course called uh, Enterprise Risk Analysis. So let's start with risk. What exactly is risk? We might describe risk as a case where uncertainty matters. If you don't believe that, think about the case where if the outcome didn't matter, would there be any risk? Now, risk does not always imply a negative or bad outcome. Uncertain future events may result in good, bad, or even neutral outcomes. And the probabilities of those kinds of outcomes or the likelihood of any one of them or more of them occurring may also be unknown. So although risk is part of nearly everyone's daily life, few of us are really trained to evaluate risk alternatives in any formal way. And to compound this further, when faced with risk alternatives, people tend to think that complex problems require complex solutions. With risk, though, the opposite is true. Simple rules can not only clarify the choices open to us, but also make the consequences more obvious, and thus making more risk-savvy choices possible. Now, traditionally, the sources of risk that we consider in agriculture uh, are five, and those are listed on the screen as market, production, institutional, human, and financial risk. Obviously, those are pretty broad categories. Uh, but they're intended to cover sort of the waterfront of different kinds of risk outcomes. So we move then to enterprise risk. What exactly do we mean? But here we're focusing on the implications of decisions that we make on a day-to-day -day or season-to-season -season basis for how they affect or would impact a single enterprise or commodity rather than the whole farm or the whole ranch. And so while our options for managing those sources of risk that we face are generally grouped into five broad categories, being avoiding the risk, reducing it, transferring it, increasing our capacity to bear it, or even accepting the risk. So what about risk, man risk management and some sort of a formal process, if there would be one, to, to evaluate those decisions? So when we're evaluating those kinds of decisions that would affect the enterprise risk and trying to think about what management options we have available to us, we're really focused on the implication of the decision made uh, or taken for a specific enterprise or commodity and not thinking again about the whole farm. But rather, we're looking at a broad range of management decisions uh, that could include anything from timing of the production activity to the quantity of the inputs that we might be using or, or level of, of uh, input selected or the choice uh, to follow one approach or another. So we're thinking about making an assessment of these options. Uh, what we want to do first is identify the sources of risk, which we've kind of run through already. But instead of thinking about the whole farm, think about how those sources of risk would impact us at that enterprise level. So the stress here is on how those risks are threatening the enterprise, not the whole farm. Not all of the sources of risk are going to influence each enterprise in the same particular way, or if at all. And it's also important to identify the risks associated with not pursuing a management strategy within one enterprise or another. Beyond the sources of risk, we should also consider the level of control that's available uh, to us in management capacity to adjust or, or influence the effect of the risk. So we may have a lot of control over one particular source of risk, uh, but we may not have much control at all over other sources of risk for a specific enterprise. So we also want to consider whether or not the level of control is sufficient to re either reduce or mitigate the ri risk to a desired level within that particular enterprise. We can think of through a, a little further in terms of risk analysis. We're thinking here about developing an understanding of the risk itself, but also what can be undertaken uh, to, as far as management activities, to adjust the impact of that risk. Um, 
And it may be that we look into that in, in one level of detail or another, depending on the level of threat that we feel like uh, that risk represents to the, to the operation. And, uh, and also, why don't we want to think about when we're considering threat about whether or not that decision comes up often or whether we actually have an opportunity to move forward in the face of that particular risk. And so if we think about our risk uh, management strategies, we're, we're considering here where the threat is, is judged to be great enough now to justify some additional effort on the part of management, where we might spend some additional time developing of, and evaluating our alternative risk management strategies. And here we're going to think about the uh, resource costs and returns, including financial resources, uh, for implementing one strategy versus another. We want to think about the management effort that would be required and uh, the attention that, that's going to be necessary to make sure that the strategy is uh, properly implemented and, and is monitored as time goes on. Uh, the speed at which uh, the strategy could be implemented, say if uh, a bad event occurred, how quickly could we make that uh, strategy come off? And then the capacity uh, that we have both as, as managers as well as the operation to address uh, some or all of the consequences that may be represented by the, uh, the bad event that, uh, or, or negative consequences should they occur. So what are our treatment options? Uh, they're not necessarily mutually exclusive, very likely, or necessarily appropriate in all circumstances. So we should also keep in mind that when we implement a management strategy, there is a chance that we might also be introducing certain kinds of risk through our attempts to manage. So we need to be careful when we consider what our options are and how those options would interact with one another once they begin, uh, once we begin implementation. So some attempts should be made certainly as to monitor the treatment plan as it is implemented and where the threat level is warranted, uh, assess the level of residual risk or that level of risk that remains after treatment has been applied effectiveness. So few options exist to really help managers to evaluate alternative treatments where no records are kept or no data is collected on the effects of treatment. Uh, so that's something to really carefully take into account is how are we going to monitor uh, the implementation of any kind of a risk strategy we might be thinking of putting in place. W with a set of treatment goals in mind, Treatment effectiveness can be evaluated both in terms of qualitative as well as quantitative measures. And some of those kinds of measures might include things like changes to net income, uh, variability in income over time, uh, the value at risk as we assess it over time, and we might even uh, consider developing various of likelihood measures uh, with the resource changes that we forecast for the strategy we're thinking of implementing. So selection after evaluating the options uh, should include developing a detailed description of the treatment and the comp uh, complete with the action steps and the assignment of, of the roles and responsibilities to manage and monitor that treatment plan as it unfolds. Uh, the plan should also include the expected benefit uh, that we might think we're going to gain by, develop by implementing a plan or a certain type of treatment. Uh, the performance measures we'll be looking at, so we'd list those out uh, in black and white. Again, we'd want to list the persons who are going to be responsible and what actions we're anticipating they should take, uh, as well as the timing and the schedule of those uh, actions uh, and the execution of them over time. Uh, any resources that would be required, we want to make sure we have those on hand at the right time, uh, and so we'll want to list those out in terms of a schedule going forward. And then whatever reporting and monitoring uh, system we're thinking of putting in place, we'll want to, uh, we want to make a note of that. Um, and if there are some periodic measures we want to take, make sure that we have that down as, as another set of steps uh, that we would be following as we un, uh, unfold the uh, treatment option. So now let's move to take a look at how this approach might be followed uh, for enterprise risk management using a case study situation. And Jay is going to present that, but I'll turn it back to Jeff at this point to, to step forward with those next set of comments.